Hi, this is Angela G. from No Longer Lukewarm for Red Hot Christians and Wannabes. These videos are for those of you who like to listen while you may be doing something else. Uh, for those of you who like to read my blogs, you can find that link in the description box below. So this one is called Suffering as a Christian, Three Things We Can Do. Pain is universal. Whether it's physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual, every person on earth experiences pain. We just can't get away from it in our fallen world. As Christians, it can be difficult to reconcile the existence of our pain with the expectation of our behavior. Even when we're suffering, we still have a job to do for the Lord. We must still be an example to others. We must still remember to love our neighbors, many of whom are hurting as much or more than we are, even if we can't see it. For the suffering Christian, frustration might set in unless we remember the big picture. Here are three things we can do to keep our eternal perspective during times of suffering. A foundational truth, God allows our suffering. Satan has a special target on the backs of Christians who live for God. He wants to bring problem after problem to keep us from fulfilling our God-given purpose and weary us in the process. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, Paul mentions the messenger, me, mentions the messenger from Satan sent to buffet him, knock him off course. Although the particular thorn wasn't mentioned, we know that God allowed it. Paul's pain was for a purpose, to keep his pride in check. Also, the Genesis, in Genesis chapters 37 to 50, Joseph was sold into slavery. He spent 13 years in Egyptian bondage, two of them in prison. But God used his brother's jealous betrayal to save all the Israelites from famine. When it was all said and done, there was no doubt that God orchestrated everything. He took what the enemy meant for evil and used it for good, Genesis 50, 20, and for his glory. There is nothing new under the sun, and God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our pain is also the product of Satan's attempt to harm us. He wants to weary us and cause us to lose our Christian witness, but God is still in control of it all. Even when we don't understand, we can be assured of Romans 8.28. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For the suffering Christian, this brings great comfort. God allows our pain for our own good, as in the case of Paul, and or his glory, as in the case of Joseph. We just have to trust him. Three things we can do. But sometimes when we're dealing with our very own vivid physical pain, emotional hurt, or mental distractions, suddenly God's big picture might start to feel a little fuzzy and almost abstract. Here are three tangible things we can do to keep perspective and make sure that our actions align with truth. Number one, remember the two eternal destinations. When we're hurting, other people can be hard to take. In fact, those who are the most difficult are often the ones who are in the greatest amount of pain themselves. They don't know how to talk about it or what to do about it, so they act out in the only way they know how. Sometimes they don't even understand that their behavior is adding grief on top of our own pain. Pretty soon, they have trampled on our very last nerve. But instead of being so quick to wish they would go away or even telling them to do so, we need to remember one vital piece of information. Every single person we encounter has only one of two eternal destinations. Either we will be with that person in heaven one day, in which case we must take special care to love our father's children, or that person will exist in an eternal hell, in which case we have no business adding hurt to their lives, which is the only heaven they will ever know. In fact, we must do our best to show Christ's love while there is still time for him or her to choose it. Think about it. If you knew the person in front of you had only two weeks left to live, would your behavior toward him or her change? When we encounter difficult people in our pain, we must remember the stakes. We must be kind, show the love of Christ, and try to help them if we can. Number two, do good and pray. But sometimes even when people aren't wearing us with difficult behavior, our own pain can cause us to feel sad or even spiritually dry. We want to praise God, but words of adoration for our great all-powerful God, who is currently allowing our pain to continue, can come out with a groan. Here's when we can sink into the slew of despond, to borrow a phrase from the book Pilgrim's Progress. Literally, a slew is a swamp. Metaphorically, it's a situation in which nothing changes or gets better. It's a place of fear, doubt, and discouragement that can swallow us, whether it's from the guilt of our sins, as in the story, or the weight of our circumstance. Now notice what's happening in that entire paragraph above. Everything was about us, our pain, our doubt, our fear, our discouragement, but focusing on ourselves and the things that are wrong in our lives will never allow us to climb out of that swamp. It's only when we focus on Jesus and his will for us that we will be able to see past our own pain. God's will is that we love others, do good to them, and pray for them. 
When you start feeling down about your own pain, make a conscious effort to find someone else who is hurting and help him or her. A kind word, a prayer, or a thoughtful gesture can go a long way toward making both you and the other person feel better. Number three, remember that God has a plan for you. My pastor tells a great story about a bishop who was a faithful man of God. One day in a church service, someone stood with a message in tongues. No interpretation came forth, but after service, a little old lady came to the bishop and told him that the message had been for him. He was to get his house in order and prepare for God to take him home. Within two weeks, his health had deteriorated, deteriorated to the point where he was bedridden and lost his eyesight. The story goes that, as he, that he lay in bed, licking his thumb and turning imaginary Bible pages as he read the word of God. He preached repentance to salvation for anyone who might walk by his open window, and soon someone did. After hearing his preaching, a man came into the house and gave his heart and life to the Lord. Soon after, the bishop passed away. Ephesians 2.10 tells us that God isn't figuring things out for us as we go. No, he has prepared beforehand the good works that we will do for him. When He has a plan for us, and no matter what pain we might endure in this life, we can be assured that our work here isn't done until God's purpose has been fulfilled. Imagine if that bishop would have spent his last days crying that he was sick and blind instead of boldly proclaiming the word of God. Imagine what a difference we can make if we focus on God and others instead of ourselves. When it seems like your pain is all you can think about, remember that you're still here for a reason. Focus on the job at hand. Ask the Lord how he can use you in every situation. Good advice to the suffering Christian. Love With Your Life by Halin is a song that may not be one of the old theological treasures of Christendom. In fact, it might even seem a bit cotton candy on first listen. But a few of the lines have really stuck with me over the years. They offer a bit of advice. You crash into a brand new bit day, the world's up in your face, and they're going to whisper in your ear, just push them back, you need your space to be who you're going to be, you got so much more to give, don't look to the left or right, you know the future's worth the fight, don't look to the left or right. Sometimes the world, difficult people, our own pain and problems, gets up in our face. Everything feels so pressing, so important, and so near and real to us. It's those times that the enemy will whisper that spiritual things like God's will and way are just nice ideas that would all be well and good if we were physically healthy, felt better emotionally, and were stronger. But when the enemy brings his lies, it's those times that we need to focus even more closely on the things of God. We can't look to the left or right. We must be kind to those we encounter, do good and pray for others, and remember that our job here isn't finished yet. The future is worth the fight.